This film contains discussions around alcoholism and suicide. It was like a fairy tale. The lights, the glitz, the glamour, awards, evenings, you know, you start to feel untouchable. He's a successful business owner, but he's also um, an alcoholic. The drinking now is always drinking to excess. It's always just battering yourself. For a lot of young people, it's just part of what you do. When you had a drink, it'd be like a self-destruction button and you'd press it and everything around you would just blow up. You know, I was drinking to kind of escape, you know, escape my thoughts, escape my feelings. Stop, stop, stop! I remember hearing those words like, I don't want to be here anymore, and I remember, oh, we'll just find reasons for you to stay. So I probably had a f my first drink, like, I'd have been 13, 13 or 14 years old. Alcohol kind of came into play as, like, the cool thing to do, you know? If you are 16 and you've got your brother's ID, you are cool. I got a bit of a, a record for it, to be honest. My behaviour had always been kind of Jack the Lad and fun and what we call, what we call Drunk Dom. And Drunk Dom would always do crazy, stupid things. While at Edinburgh University, I went out um, and got really, really drunk, went to the toilet, opened the door up, no toilet paper, and tweeted, um, when you run out of toilet paper, hashtag problems at uni. I was walking around, kind of tweeting my life as a student. I was blown away by the reaction, and it got to the point where I got 50,000 followers, and I was there thinking, oh, okay, I've got this, I could turn this into a business, and uh, I got an email from a guy called Steve saying, hey, um, I'm based in Manchester, um, I'm trying to do this website for students, do you want to meet and chat around things? Come here every day for like eight years, and then you come back, you come here for two years, and you walk in, and it's like home again. Feels nice, feels nice and weird at the same time. BuzzFeed at the time, this is kind of one of the biggest digital publishers in, in the UK, and they come and do an inquiry with us and they say, you guys say you can make anything the most talked about topic on Twitter in less than half an hour. Get to stop watching and press start. In 26 minutes, we make a number one trend on Twitter, and that off the back of that, we got some massive inquiries from the likes of Disney, Fox, Spotify, Microsoft, some of the world, world's biggest companies, and we were very quickly running a kind of hugely successful business. We were kind of blown away by the lights, the glitz, the glamour, awards, evenings, you know, being invited to new bar openings, being invited to exclusive dinners. And for us, it was like, wow. There was always a reason to celebrate, which was incredible. As a young 21-year-old, when your friends who were your kind of cohort of university haven't even finished their degree yet, and you felt invincible. Today I'm here to meet Dom, I'm very much looking forward to it. What he's been through, he's a successful business owner, but he's also um, an alcoholic, which is um, obviously something that I've done a lot of research and put a lot of thought and time into um, for John Paul's storylines. It's going to be lovely to meet him today and find out about his journey and his story. Hey! Hey, bud. Hello, mate. Thanks, Thanks so much here. for having yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. This is your place? Yes, this is the office, yeah. This is what we call base camp. Yeah. Our great idea to start the base camp. Love um, that. How many staff have you got? So we've got a team of 35 at the moment, wow. so um, a lot of people are in today. Yeah. So things are obviously going very well. Yeah, it's going well, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is your company, this is where you work. Um, how long have you been here? So I've been here for two years. Um, so I started after leaving my, my last company, um, which I found when I was 19 years old. When I first started the company, kind of stress and strain of, you know, hiring people at such a young age and um, getting to like the age of 21, 22 and starting to have all these pressures on you. My only escape was, was drinking. We started to hit roadblocks in the growth of the business. Big businesses don't pay when they say they're going to pay. So we didn't factor in this idea of cash flow. Our emails got hacked. There was always something happening, always something going wrong. I decided with my, my partner at the time to go to Paris. You hear these bangs which are like can cannons. It was the night of the terrorist attacks in Paris. And I think that for me was the first time I had a panic attack. So when you're in stressful situations, what you do next kind of really sticks with you. I kind of experienced my first family loss. So my granddad um, very, very quickly had a down, downhill. And I remember going out and just drinking. It's funny, isn't it? Because alcohol is so ingrained in our culture. It doesn't matter which way you turn. Yeah, there's alcohol there. Yeah, if I had a bad day, I would turn to it as like a just medicine, really, just to escape. Like when you have a good day and things are going well, because they do go well, you yeah. know, you have some great times, um, you turn to drink as well. Win, lose, your life is just consumed by alcohol. How old 
were you when you realised that you, you, know, you had a problem and, and, and how did that sort of manifest itself? I kind of first realised I had a problem when I was 23 years old. And you do everything else apart from blame alcohol because you everything else apart from actually look at yourself and say, maybe I'm the problem. The drinking now is always drinking to excess. It's always just battering yourself. I've got these voices in my mind that are giving me doubt, that are telling me you're know, not worth it. You've got the, the voices that are saying this is all going to go terribly wrong, you're a failure. I started to put on weight, I started to lose my confidence, I started to really struggle speaking to the team, and I just kind of became a bit of a shell of myself. Drunk Dom is starting to do things which is impacting sober Dom. Going out till six in the morning, I have commitments the next day, I'm getting two hours sleep, I'm waking up, I'm on it again. I slipped over down, down our driveway and I broke my ankle. Um, and I would crawl, had to crawl into the house, crawl up to bed. I woke up at 10 from missed calls from people being like, where are you? It's, it's, it's Friday. I've got clients wanting here to meet you. It got to a head crux where I kept making tons of mistakes, upsetting friendships, upsetting relationships. It kind of all accumulated in one real blow up really where it took other people around me to say, you've got a problem. Even our first date, I remember you having like a couple of red wines and I was thinking, oh God, is he going to drive me home after this? Like, I, I did notice quite early on that you like a drink. And you, get, you gave me an ultimatum? It was on the Chester race course day, so the last day he drank. And I wasn't exactly sober myself that day, but yeah, you just took it to the next level. I said to you, it's either you carry on or you can carry on, but I'm not going to be in your life. I got invited to Chester Races with a spread bet company, and I was given free drinks. I'm kind of swaying around and a bit, starting to get a bit arrogant, you know, the typical behaviour traits. Right. Now I've got all the money I've got left on one horse to win. It came in. I spent 200 and I made 600. When you had a drink, it'd be like a self-destruction button and you'd press it and everything around you would just blow up. Some of the team that's from Social Chain are actually in all the Edge at the time. They're having a nice dinner, they're having a strategy session. I walk in there, winning all this money out of my pocket, you know, feeling like, you know, a million dollars. I start to come short, snappy, arrogant. I'm clicking fingers, I'm demanding someone to come serve us grab a bottle of wine out from the table behind us, throw some money at those people and start drinking their wine. Um, and this is at like six o'clock at night. And I get, I get thrown out. I'm now walking down all the edge high street, walking into the road. They're walking the road. Stopping cars. At one point I start urinating all over the street. You know, I was drinking to kind of escape, you know, escape my thoughts, escape my feelings. Part of me wanted to be hit. You know, part of me wanted to be like walking here and just for all just to go silent, the voices in my head and everything just to stop. Stop, stop, stop! The next morning I woke up on the Sunday, everyone from work had seen it, it had gone round, WhatsApp videos had been sent, it was like a ha ha look at this. And I felt like the world had just caved in on me and I didn't know what to do. And it was that moment then when I knew I'd really hurt people I cared about. It was the first time I actually got to blame myself. I've got to say, I'm the problem. Steve wants to meet and have a talk about what's happened. I think I made a decision for the first time just to be honest and I just sat there and said, I, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's going on with me. I've, I'm struggling. I've got problems. I need help. And I think asking for help for the first time from someone took a lot. And Steve changed from this, you know, back up, really, you know, angry to, oh, like, just looking at someone in front of him who's, like, broken. That was rock bottom that morning, but it was also the first time I feel like I could think about a future. There was a line for me where I knew I was, couldn't go any further. It's when I started to hurt other people. You, my mum sat me down and said, I don't recognise you anymore. Am I happy upsetting people? Am I happy ruining lives, ruining relationships, and creating this pain around me just so I can keep drinking? We decided to put a plan on. We'd literally gone on Google and we, we typed in CBT therapist and we called him and we found someone. Probably one of the most important things I do is I start opening up conversation with people around what I'm doing, tell people I'm stopping drinking. 
at Hollyoaks, a lot of the issues that we that we raise on the show, addiction or domestic violence or drugs or alcohol, one of our big things is about talking and having those conversations. It's my mistakes that cost my career. Oh, it's just hard, you know, not knowing what to do next. You made that step, you stood up and went, I've got an issue, yeah, yeah. we're going to have this chat with everybody and it's out in the open and that's, from there, we can deal with it. Yeah, and it's, it's like I say, it's talking, it's, it's real action. And that was the toughest part, because you've got to have some really tough conversations with your friends, your family, you know, sit my parents down, you know, they had every single right to, to you know, get rid of me. The things I did to them and how I upset them and uh, things I said to my, some of my friends and staff and colleagues, unforgivable. I didn't know how or what to do when you don't drink, so, so you start to plan um, things on Saturday and Sunday because you're trying to avoid situations, you're not going to awards, you're not going to night outs, so you find yourself trying to spend time in more constructive ways. And slowly this kind of starts to build up um, and you start to see like positives, sleeping better, recovering better, being a nicer person, able to manage people, having respect. You know, one thing that I lost during that drinking thing was respect from people. I became myself, you know, I had a great support network who were always kind of protecting me and keeping me safe and having someone to stand by you and put out an arm around you is, is so much more powerful than anything. I'm so proud of Dom. I think just from when I first met you to the man you are today, it's like you're still Dom, but you're also the amount you've grown and the man you've become as well, like in just six short years. I, I remember probably about 18 months into my kind of sobriety, watching um, A Star Is Born, the movie, with um, Bradley Cooper, and he kills he himself, takes his own life, yeah. takes his own life. And I, I remember breaking down in that movie for about 25 minutes, like there with my girlfriend. I, at that point, I realised what I'd done. I'd realised that I'd probably saved my life. And it was just this kind of wave of emotions where I just, I was just, it felt like a release of everything. Any, any advice that you, you might have, you know, as a, as, a, as a recovering alcoholic? Firstly, the biggest thing I did that helped me was tell others. Tell others that you, you're struggling or tell others that you're going to try this because peer pressure is the single biggest reason people fail. Find genuine love around you. Find people who will support you. If they won't support you, they're not your friends. Understand the reasons why you are drinking in the first instance. You know, figure out what that is. Everyone's got different situations, you know. I believe it's a little bit like those glow sticks you used to get when you were at school. When you know when you crack them, mm -hmm. they light up. That's sobriety. It, that break is something you feel. You feel... It hurts. Yeah, you, you really feel that. But then you shine. I, I, I think you're incredibly brave and, and, and I'm, I'm incredibly proud to, you know, to be sat next to you, mate. I really am. I think it's... Thank you. An, an incredible, incredible journey. It's the single greatest thing I've ever achieved and it's the single greatest thing I will continue to achieve and there is nothing that will ever beat it. Not drinking and having sobriety really is a superpower. The clarity of mind all the time, you feel like you have the energy, you feel like you sleep better. Being sober has allowed me to be the best version of myself. You become a dreamer again and you become a believer and you become someone who thinks, okay, I can do whatever I want to do. I think there's now no mountain too big for me to climb because I've done this. I just believe I can do anything. For help and support on any of the issues raised, please visit channel4.com forward slash Hollyoaks dash support.